My name is John Marlin, and I am a program manager on the high availability and storage team. I own the failover clustering component, and this video series details many of the new features with Windows 2019 failover clustering. In part three, we talked about cluster sets, our, basically our scaling solution for clusters, combining clusters together, allowing for virtual machine fluidity. We talked about Windows Server upgrades, fully supporting in-place upgrades of Windows Server now. We also talked about MSDTC and its ability to now be held on uh, cluster shared volumes. In part four, we're going to talk about two node hyperconverged. We're going to talk about file share witness and its new capability. Talk a little bit about what we've done to help alleviate and detect for split brains and a few of the security things that we've done with failover clustering. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a true two-node hyperconverged solution. It's full-featured, cost-effective, and surprisingly, it's it's pretty popular. Um, it is the it is resilient to resilient to the loss of one node plus one additional drive. Now we have two options for the volumes when you're setting this up. The first is nested two-way mirror. When you set up a ne the nested two-way mirror, you have one data partition and three copies, four in total. All writes go to all copies. All reads come from any copy. So it doesn't matter what you connect to, as long as you're reading, it can come from anywhere. The second option is nested mirror accelerated parity. What this does, it combines nested mirroring with nested parity. So we still have, in essence, four copies of the data and for the mirror, and two copies with parity of data. We'll rotate data between the mirror and parity in real time. All incoming I.O. is serviced quickly through the mirror. Then the cold data is stored efficiently in the parity. So you get the benefits of both mirror being the fastest, parity being a little bit slower, but with the combination of, t of the two, you get almost the same speed, not quite as much, but you get the resiliency with the mirror and the parity and the speedness of it. So how much space do I get? In a normal two-way mirror, it's 50%. With the nested mirroring, See, being that there's four copies, you're only getting approximately about 25%. So there is a caveat to it. So there's pros and there's cons with each. With the nested mirror accelerated parity, you get approximately 40%. Again, almost the, as much as what the mirror two-way mirror can hold, plus with the accelerated parity, you get almost the same speed. Now, it does depend on the number of capacity drives. Obviously, the more you have, uh, the more the better. When we're talking about achieving cluster quorum, looking at some of the leading competitors, for the witness, you can have a full third server, which defeats the purpose of a two node. You can have a witness appliance, downside of that, high storage, high bandwidth requirements are there. Or you could put a VM in the cloud. Again, high storage, high bandwidth requirements. 
with Windows Server, you can have a full third server, defeats the purpose. You can have a file share, minimal storage, minimal bandwidth, we're not communicating with it that often. Or you can have the cloud witness. Again, minimal storage, minimal bandwidth. But what about at the edge? What if you are on a ship or a vehicle or field sites? Clouds aren't always, necess always aren't necessarily available to you. Internet access. Um, domain controllers aren't necessarily always accessible. You know, lift and shift. Place the uh, S2D in a field site, you may not have a domain controller. Uh, small businesses or branch offices may not have access to a domain controller. Uh, box stores and retails, this is getting a lot more common now with two node scenarios. So one of the things we did with file share witness is how about using a, a USB, a simple little USB port. Real cheap to purchase or if you go to conferences they're handed out like candy. You probably have some stuck in a drawer somewhere in your desk that's not even being used. With it being on a USB, there's no Kerberos required, meaning no domain controller is needed. No certificates are required. No cluster name object is needed. Obvious perfect choice for domainless or multi domain clusters. No account is needed on the nodes. And it's a very simple setup. Here I have a Netgear router that I want to use as my file share witness with the with the USB. First thing you do, plug in the USB obviously. Second, share it from the router. Go into the to the uh, router settings, set up a share name, set up a username, and set up a password for access. And what we did with the file share witness through PowerShell is we added an additional new parameter, dash credential. Running the command in, passing the credentials for the user and password that you created on the router allows it to work. We'll access it. It functions the same way that it always has as a normal traditional file server. This will also open up the ability to use NAS appliances as well, not just USB. Since we're on the witness subject, split brains, DFS. DFS or file share witnesses on DFS is a bad idea. It's never been supported fully. The problem is if you get a disconnect between nodes, nodes will try and go out to the file share witness. If it's housed on DFS, especially DFS R, then you could get routed to separate shares. Each side thinks it has the share, it has quorum, it brings everything up. In the case of a database application such as SQL, you know, database corruption could occur. I'm not saying it will, but there is a possibility because now you're accessing data, the same data, from different, lo from different locations. DFSN is supported if there is only one link. Um, it has, can cause a split brains, as I mentioned. And what we did with 2019 is we'll actually check for the existence if the share is DFS. And we will prevent it from being accessed or utilized. We also built into the is alive health checks against the file share witness if we detect that it's been changed to a DFS. 
then we will fail the resource. And speaking of split brains, one of the things we've done is enhance the detection for multiple partitions, if we see multiple partitions. Once we detect that there are multiple partitions, we will stop the cluster and reform it so that, that we don't have the chances of the split brain, don't have the chances of any possible data corruption if it, if it could exist. This helps that data loss potential. Security has always been a concern. One of the things that's been uh, at the top of a lot of people's mind is NTLM. A lot of people are starting to disable NTLM and going with straight Kerberos only. However, clusters still required NTLM for a lot of the stuff that it does. Communication between the nodes, CSV, traffic, and so forth. So, what did we do in 2019? We blew it up, redesigned it, redid it all. So now we have 2019 clusters without NTLM dependencies. What we did was now we are using all certificates. This will allow our intra-cluster SMB authentication to function. Instead of using NTLM, we're using SMB authentication now. This will alleviate all the NTLM dependencies. Depending on what you're running on the, NT, on, the, uh, on the cluster, you may still need NTLM. Basically, it's, it's the app, app that you're going to be dealing with. So to wrap this one up, we talked about the true two-node hyperconverge nested mirror resiliency or nested mirror accelerated parity. We talked about the file share witness no longer required for Kerberos. You can set up for a USB off a router. Uh, we talked about some of the split brain enhancements that we did for detecting if partitions there stop and reform. And we talked a little bit about security and the security, uh, which we'll mention a couple of things in a later uh, video. Uh, but the biggest thing about security in this particular part is NTLM. We are no longer required to have NTLM. It is all Kerberos now. In the next video, we're going to talk about some of the new scale-out file server enhancements. We're going to talk about cluster shared volumes and what we've done with that, how we're going to deal with marginal disks, and also some of the enhancements with cluster aware updating. I want to thank you for watching this video.